Hey everybody, welcome to my RV7 slash Pete and Pole Air Camper YouTube channel. I've been trying to make this intro video now for probably a half hour and I'm going to try to keep this short and sweet and to the point. The reason I'm making these videos is because one, I like to build and two, I really enjoy helping other people. So these videos will show you how I am building my airplane. Now, I'm not saying that I'm an expert, because I'm not, and I'm not saying that the way that I've built my airplane is the way that you should build yours. These are just for entertainment purposes. Maybe um, when you watch these, it will spark some ideas in your own mind on ways that you want to build your airplane. The other reason I'm making these videos is because I need help building my RV7. I, I can build the airplane myself. Financially, it would take a very long time to do it. I would rather not wait a very long time because I want to use this airplane as a platform to travel around the country and help other people with their aircraft projects or with their aircraft maintenance. So in order for me to do that, I've set up a GoFundMe page and an Amazon wish, wish list and uh, those links will be in the description of all of these RV videos. So if you feel moved enough when you watch these videos, um, if they've helped you and you feel motivated in return to help me, I'd appreciate um, your donation or uh, your purchases from the wish list. So that's it. Uh, that's the mission of the airplane. Like I said, I'd like to use it as a platform to travel to people. They can reach out to me and say, hey, I'm building an RV whatever. I'm building a Pete and Pull air camper. I'm, I'm building a stole type airplane. I, I have a certified airplane that I need some help with. What, whatever it is, um, I would like to be able to fly to their shop, to their hangar, and be with them real time, hands on, and try to help them as best I can. I might not be able to help. Um, Maybe I show up and, you know, the only thing that I can do is, is help you move a wing from one side of the shop to the other. I'm okay with that. So that's the idea. Um, and as a little thank you, as little as it is, this is uh, an RV7 elevator skin. And if you make a donation or you purchase something from my wish list, I'd like to add your name to this skin and uh, ultimately, um, hopefully, I'll have it full of names and uh, those names and the skin will be mounted at my hangar, what I call Wall of Honor, uh, just as a little recognition that these people um, were nice enough uh, to help me with my project. So that's it. Um, again, these are the RV7 videos. Uh, you might be interested in checking out my people Air Camper videos as well. But. Um, that's it. All right. Uh, that's enough uh, yip yap for now. I say we uh, get to building some RVs. I've got my fuel tank completely clecoed in place onto the wing. I, this probably won't show up, but my gap here between the tank skin and the leading edge skin, this line here is really, really nice. And you can see here on top, it, it sits really nice. There's basically no step here. There's very, very, very slightly, a very slight step here. But I think the majority of that is because the skin thicknesses are different. This uh, leading edge skin is 0 0.025, and I think this skin is 0 0.032, or maybe a little thicker. I don't recall, but. The fit is really, really nice down through here. The fit here, this is the, the main wing skin, the top, and this is the fuel tank skin. There's a little bit of a gap here. Uh, it's easy to see because with the blue vinyl on, you can see the gold spar underneath clearly. But it's not bad. Um, right here where my fingernail is, this is probably a sixteenth of an inch gap. It opens up a little bit here and there along the way, but it, it maintains roughly a sixteenth of an inch. It might be a little bit wider here, but I'm going to call that sixteenth of an inch. Now keep in mind that none of these skins have been prepped. This skin and this skin have not been prepped. 
So it's not like I had taken off too much when I deburred or when I was filing. It's not like I took off a lot of material. Now I'm stuck with a gap here. These have not been touched. These are as is from Vans. So there's really nothing I can do about that because everything else fits really nice. I have all my Clicos in along the, the, these are connected to the spar. These Clicos here are all connected to the baffle, the fuel tank baffle. And then of course I've got all the ribs Clicoed. And I actually have the ribs Clicoed to the baffle and to the spar, the Z brackets and everything. So everything is in place as if this was going to be permanently mounted. So, and I've checked, uh, I've, ch I've checked to make sure that the wing is level, and it is, and I've checked to make sure that there's no twist, and there isn't, and the, the uh, seams seem to fit pretty well. Let me go around to the other side here. So this is the bottom of the wing. I don't have any skins on the back side because I needed access to do some stuff, and I don't have enough Clecos. So here again, this is the seam on the bottom of the wing between the leading edge and the fuel tank. And again, this is this is less than a sixteenth. I really can't get my fingernail in there. And it's it's consistent all the way around. And again, I got all the Clecos in along the spar, Clecos in along the baffle, and then the ribs. And then you can see these nubs here. I've got Clecos holding the uh, the little L brackets on the inside of the tank. Another thing I wanted to point out, some of the holes, so like this hole here, there's a hole in the skin but there's no hole in the ribs, so you have to drill this hole. To make sure that this hole is located correctly on the rib, you want Clecos on either side of it. So. On the, the rib itself, there's a hole here and a hole here. You want to make sure you establish those holes through the skin with Clecos. That way you know that when you drill this hole into the rib, it's located correctly. Initially, I only had, I believe it was this top Cleco. And I noticed that this hole here with this Cleco out of place, this hole was slightly off. So I had to work the rib over to get this hole lined up to put this Clico in. So if I was moving the rib to get this hole aligned, I knew that this hole, or this part of the rib, was moving around as well. So now with it clico on both sides, I know that this hole, when I drill, it's probably going to be in the correct location on the rib. Same thing over here. These holes need to be drilled for the fuel tank attachment. So you want to have you want to have a decent number of Clecos along this rib here to help establish where these holes are going to be as far as having things move around and, and things like that. So basically what I'm saying is wherever you need to drill a through hole, there's a hole in the skin, but there's no hole underneath that base material needs to be drilled. Wherever you need to do something like that, you want to make sure the structure around it is nice and secure with a lot of Clecos and everything is in alignment. With the ribs, like I was saying, with these holes, you want to make sure you Cleco on either side of it to make sure that this part of the rib is where it needs to be before you drill that hole. And that's about it. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to match drill everything that I can in place because this is as real world as I can get it. I'm going to go ahead and, and match drill everything that I can um, and then I'll take everything off. You can see here, here's the spar and you can see these holes are very close to where the spar is on the back side so I'm not going to drill any of these in place. I'll drill everything else and then I'll take this off, I'll reassemble it in the cradle and then I'll match drill these baffle holes off the wing so not to mess up the spar. And they do mention that in the instructions I believe. Alright, I'm going to start drilling and um, get these holes match drilled and keep moving on. What I like to do now that I have, I have I have all the exposed 
holes drilled. What I like to do is use a marker and I just mark where the clecos are still in place, right under the skin. I just mark them like that. Everywhere there's a cleco, I've already marked most of these. These are all marked. Just a little tick mark at each cleco. So now I can go ahead and move these out of here, put them wherever I want on the skin, and I won't lose track of which holes I need to drill. So mark the clecos, move them, and then come back and drill all of your little tick mark locations. That way you don't miss anything. Another thing I wanted to mention, as I said, this row of holes here, those are baffle holes. But some of the some of the structure of the spar comes through here, and you don't want to go through the hole into that structure. So these holes should be drilled with the uh, fuel tank off of the wing. None of that's on camera. I'll change that in a minute. I'll do that now. Let me move this. I think that's probably good. So this line of holes here, these holes are baffle holes. But you can see here some of the wing structure or some of the spar structure is behind that. And if you drill through here, and you come out the other side, you're going to drill into this structure here. So this line of holes will be drilled after the fuel tank has been taken off of the spar. This line of holes on the leading edge, you can go ahead and drill all of those because there's no structure behind there. This line of holes here. There's no uh, spar structure behind here. It's just a spar flange. You can go ahead and drill all these. So like I said, I've drilled these holes. I've marked all of my Cleco locations. Now I can move all the Clecos and come back and drill wherever I have the tick marks. Countersinking. So this row of holes here these are the uh, attach or the uh, the holes where you attach the tank skin to the baffle. These have to be countersunk on the outside. You can't dimple the skin because after you get the fuel tank together, the baffle is one of the last things to go on, and it needs to slip into here. If you got the skin dimpled, it makes it very difficult to get the baffle to to seat all the way against the ribs here. So you want a nice smooth side. On the, uh, on the inside of the skins, you want that nice and smooth so the baffle will lay in here nice when everything else is put together. So you have to countersink all these holes. So again, what I do, I'll do a test hole, do a, a shallow countersink, keep checking it with a rivet until you get it flush, until the rivet head is flush with the skin. Since this is a fuel tank and the rivets are going to be wet set, meaning they're going to have wet fuel tank sealant on them when I install them. I go a little bit deeper on these countersinks to make up for the space that's going to be taken up with the, the fuel tank sealant. So I go a little bit deeper than flush. And uh, I use a little bit of cutting fluid. I don't know if you can see that, probably not, but I do have cutting fluid on all these holes. I've already done a few holes here and I'll just do a couple more just so you can get an idea of what it entails. I keep the uh, vinyl out of the way so it doesn't interfere with the setting of the countersink. Make sure the countersink is clean. Again, I go slow and uh, make sure I try to keep this nice and straight. What you'll see me do when I get it in there, I'll kind of move this around a little bit just to make sure that it's flat, that I'm not angled in some way. And if you if you go down and you kind of move it around, you can feel when it's actually flat and it's not angled.
So that's the general idea for that. And then of course when I get them all done, I'll move these Clicos and I'll countersink those, clean this up, and then uh, I'll recheck these with a, uh, with a rivet to make sure they're slightly below flush, again to make up for the uh, fuel tank sealing. So that's that. Get these done and uh, see what's next. Oh, another thing, you'll notice the cradle. The cradle is a good, uh, a good thing to have on if you're going to lay the fuel tank sideways just because it gives it a flat surface here to rest on. And it actually keeps even these longer Clicos, it keeps these from contacting your work surface. So I like it, it just keeps everything stable and secure. All right. Hey everybody, it's me again. I just wanted to say thanks for checking out my video. And like I said in the intro, if, uh, if you find these videos helpful and useful and you're moved enough to want to in return help me with my project, my GoFundMe link and my Amazon wish list link is in the description of each of these videos. And again, if, uh, if you do make a donation or a purchase, uh, I'll add your name to this uh, elevator skin and, and it will be displayed on my wall of honor at my hangar. So that's it. Uh, thanks for coming by. I, I really do appreciate the donations. And um, hopefully when this aircraft is finished, uh, we can meet in person and I will be able to help you or anybody else who needs help with their project. And um, we'll see what happens. All right. Thanks again. And uh, we'll see you in the next video.